Hello, and welcome to the Encore Research Group podcast, where we encourage community research and education with weekly podcasts. I'm your host, Benton Loeyball, and this week we're talking about sunlight, vitamin D, and the role of clinical trials. Shedding light on vitamin D. It's spring, which means lots of sneezing, sweets, and sunlight. Of those three, sunlight is probably the healthiest, so let's shine a light on what sunlight does in the body and why we need it. First, the sun is vital for keeping the planet habitable. Without the sun, we would all die very fast as oxygen would solidify on the surface and we'd be unable to breathe. But beyond being vital to life, sunlight is also used by the skin to produce vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually a collection of very similar molecules called calciferols. These are fat-soluble steroid hormones that are used throughout the body. Vitamin D deficiency is a worldwide problem and affects at least one-third of Americans. It is linked to complications in bones, kidneys, heart, and brain, as well as to diabetes, immune system problems, obesity, and poor pregnancy outcomes. Though indications of this deficiency seem robust, the solutions are anything but. Unfortunately, the effects of supplemental vitamin D, and therefore sunlight, are grossly understudied. Trial after trial after trial shows that supplemental vitamin D, and in some cases supplemental light, does not have a significant effect on measurable outcomes for patients. These trials consistently find that the levels of circulating vitamin D in the bloodstream are increased, but symptoms are unaffected. The only results I could find from randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trials showing actual benefits to patients were for those with sickle cell disease and in reducing respiratory infections in elderly patients. This is counter to common knowledge and the assumed knowledge found in several research papers. Observational studies where scientists look at populations find myriad problems associated with vitamin D and sunlight deficiency. Let's try to illuminate the reasons why clinical trials haven't found benefits when giving supplemental vitamin D. The answer is likely that the problems that cause vitamin D deficiency aren't solved by supplementation. Vitamin B production starts in the skin, but then goes to the liver and kidneys before the body can use it. The symptoms of low levels of vitamin D may not improve if there are underlying liver or kidney issues, though those conditions can hinder the production of vitamin D. Further, observational studies look at a population and investigate the correlations between items. This can tell us things that may be associated with each other, but does not indicate that one thing is causing the other. An example would be looking at the availability of toilet paper and used car prices over the last 10 years. In 2020, toilet paper was unavailable and used car prices soared. This wasn't because we needed toilet paper to run our used cars or anything. There was a pandemic disrupting the supply chains. In the case of vitamin D deficiency, the lack of vitamin D is probably the effect of not going outside. If a mental disorder like depression keeps people indoors, this would lower the vitamin D they produce, not the other way around. On top of this, it is very difficult for scientists to isolate sunlight, and therefore vitamin D, from exercise. People who stay inside and never see the sun are, on average, less active. This can lead to some problems we associate with vitamin D deficiency, including bone issues, obesity, diabetes, and heart problems. In these cases, vitamin D deficiency is more a canary in the coal mine than the smoke of a fire. So what can we take away from this? First and most importantly is that in all of these clinical trials, supplemental vitamin D has been found to be safe. If vitamin D helps you with an issue, there's nothing wrong with continuing your care and always consult with your doctor before making changes to your medication. Second, clinical trials are vital to our medical system. Observational studies are no substitute for actual experimentation in a placebo-controlled, randomized trial. The common knowledge is that sunlight and vitamin D are good for us. This is true, but it's best to start at the source, the sun, if you can, rather than supplementing after the fact. We should spend more time outside in the nice weather, but remember your sunscreen. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode. If you'd like to know more, all of our sources are linked in the podcast description. You can also visit our website at EncoreDocs.com. That's E-N-C-O-R-E-D-O-C-S dot com. 
Encore Research Group has been involved in clinical research for over 25 years. We have seven clinical research sites across Florida, including two phase one units. If you're in Florida, join us at sites in Northeast Florida and on the Nature Coast. If you're outside of Florida or South Georgia and are interested in joining a clinical trial, head over to clinicaltrials.gov. For more great content, including discussions by physicians and clinical research experts, check out the MedEvidence podcast. My name is Benton. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next week.